right, <laughs> here we go. So again, welcome. My name is Sarah Lewis. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the Program Officer for Performing Arts and Accessibility Coordinator at Mid-Atlantic Arts. Uh, I am a white woman with very short, dark hair and a blue and white striped shirt. And uh, I'm zooming in today from my home located on land known as Baltimore, Maryland. I'm just moving to this area and learning about the uh, past and present indigenous communities that steward this land. But I want to acknowledge the legacy of the Piscataway and the Susquehannock peoples and the enduring presence of Piscataway, Lumbee, and Eastern Band of Cherokee community members in Baltimore City today. I'm happy to welcome you to today's webinar on the Special Presenter Initiatives Program. I'm here with my colleague, Sarah Tune, who is the Program Specialist at Mid-Atlantic Arts. Uh, today, we will share uh, what this program is, who is eligible, and how to apply. Towards the end of our time together, we'll also hear from Ed Bourgeois with Western Arts Alliance about their Advancing Indigenous Performances, or AIP, program and how you can leverage additional funds for your special presenter initiatives engagements for an artist or company with a lead artist who self-identifies as Indigenous through the AIP Touring Funds program. We'll also have time for questions at the end of this presentation. So this webinar is meant to serve as an overview and a resource. Before applying, make sure to review the Special Presenter Initiatives guidelines at midatlanticarts.org. You can reach out to me with questions about these guidelines at any time. My email is slewitis at midatlanticarts.org and we'll share it a few times throughout this presentation. So, before we get started, I want to share a little bit about Mid-Atlantic Arts. Mid-Atlantic Arts is one of six regional arts organizations, which are place-based nonprofit arts service organizations committed to strengthening America's infrastructure by increasing access to creativity for all Americans. So basically, we serve as a link between states and jurisdictions in the Mid-Atlantic region. We work in close partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts, as well as the NEA's member state and jurisdictional arts agencies. Now some housekeeping. For today's webinar, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. We have ASL interpretation for today's webinar. Joy is here with us. To pin Joy uh, throughout the webinar, select the three dots in the top right corner of their video and select pin. Automatic closed captioning is also available for this webinar. For those viewing the webinar live, to view automatic captions, click CC or Live Transcript button, and then click Show Subtitles. Throughout your application process for special presenter initiatives, if you are in need of accommodation, please contact me, Sarah Lewis, at 410-539-6655. Extension 110 or email S L E W I T U S at midatlanticarts.org. All right, now let's talk about the Special Presenter Initiatives Program. This is a presenter led opportunity for presenters in Delaware, DC, the US Virgin Islands, West Virginia, and the Native nations that share this geography. The program is funded through the NEA's Regional Touring Program, which provides funding to the regional arts organizations to support touring across each respective RAO's states and regions. The program is intended to support artist tours to small to medium-sized presenters in states and jurisdictions listed above, and to support presenters' engagement of artists and communities. Here are some important dates for special presenter initiatives. The final application deadline is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, 
and the project period for special presenter initiative supported engagements is September 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. And next, let's talk about presenter eligibility. Special presenter initiatives is a presenter-driven opportunity, which means that presenters must engage the artist or company that they want to present. To be eligible for special presenter initiatives, presenters meet, must meet all of these criteria. They must be based in Delaware, DC, the US Virgin Islands, or the native nations that share that geography. They must be designated by the IRS as a 501c3 nonprofit or be a unit of state or local government. They must be an organization engaged with touring with that engages touring artists, excuse me, to perform for general audiences as a significant part of your activity. And you must be in good standing with Mid-Atlantic Arts at the time of application. I also want to mention that you may apply for and receive a maximum of two uh, applications per presenter. So may apply for a total of two and may receive up to two if they are both successfully recommended for funding. So the following are not eligible for funding through special presenter initiatives. Uh, producing organizations that solely create artistic work or assemble artists to perform as ensembles. So if you primarily present your own work, you are likely not eligible for this opportunity. You can reach out to me if you have any questions about whether this applies to you. Also fundraising events and performances primarily serving a non-public audience are not eligible. So in your special presenter, initiatives application, you can request 50% of the negotiated artist fee up to $2,000, or if you're based in the U.S. Virgin Islands, up to $5,000. And for all applicants, you may request no less than $750. The negotiated artist fee must be listed in uh, the countersigned agreement between you, the presenter, and the artist or company. You can also request a, fit, a presenter capacity support of up to $2,000. You can find a list of all that is eligible for funding under presenter capacity support in the guidelines. It's important to remember that all grants from Mid-Atlantic Arts must be matched on a one-to-one -one basis with non-federal funds, meaning that if you were awarded $3,000 from Mid-Atlantic Arts, you would need to match that funding with another $3,000 for a total project budget of $6,000. That match could come from ticket sales, individual donations, other foundation fundraising, other non-federal funding sources. We'll talk about the budget more when we look at the application in just a moment. So what is required in terms of programming for each proposal? Here is what we ask in order for you to be eligible for special presenter initiative support. The proposed project must have at least one performance open to the general public and at least one community engagement activity. And there are lots of ways to define community engagements uh, and we'll ask you to uh, define it for us in your application through your narrative. Both of the uh, things here, the performance as well as the community engagement opportunity can be in person or virtual. And the proposed uh, engagement must take place in the project period between September 1st, 2022 and June 30th, 2023. Let's talk about what artists can be engaged with support from the Special Presenter Initiatives Program. Again, this is a presenter-led application, so artists are not eligible to apply as you think about what artists you will propose to present with support from special presenter initiatives, keep these requirements in mind. Uh, the artist can be based anywhere across the US or around the world, including in your state or jurisdiction. The special presenter initiatives is not a roster program. So we're asking you to select an artist that works for you. The only exception to that is that the artists you, you select cannot be on the Performing Arts Global Exchange or Mid-Atlantic Tours rosters through Mid-Atlantic Arts. 
This applies to a relatively small number of artists or companies, and those rosters can be found on the Mid-Atlantic Arts website. Reach out to me if you have any questions about whether an artist you're considering is currently on one of those rosters. Now we're going to take a look at the application itself, and I'm going to swap my screen share here for our uh, virtual tour of the Smart Simple page. Oops, sorry about that. Here we go. So here we are on the Smart Simple website for Mid-Atlantic Arts. Mid-Atlantic Arts has recently switched our online grants platform from eGrant to Smart Simple. So if you've applied for special presenter initiatives or any of our programs in the past, please keep in mind that your application process is going to be different than it has been in the past. So first to apply, you'll visit midatlanticarts.smartsimple.com, and here we are. I'm going to log in with my test account here to show you how it'll look when you log in as a user. Oops. Try that again. Here we go. When you're in the portal, to start your application, click on Funding Opportunities under Available Applications. You'll see we have four funding opportunities available right now. And when you want to apply for Special Presenter Initiatives, you'll hit this Apply Now button under the Special Presenter Initiatives title. I've already started my application. So I won't click that button and instead I'll show you how to view your application in progress. Go back to the home page and under my applications, go to in progress. You'll see I have two applications open now. So I'm going to go ahead and open the arts, uh, excuse me, the special presenter initiatives application. And now we're inside. This is what your application will look like as well. The first page here auto populates with organizational information that you'll input when you create your smart symbol account. We'll hit next and go to the project page. Under project, you'll share basic information about the project that you're proposing. An important note here is that each applicant must have a countersigned agreement with the artist or company that you are proposing to present through the Special Presenter Initiatives Program. This letter gets uploaded, uploaded right here on this page. After completing each page, I do encourage you to hit Save Draft before advancing. This will uh, make sure that your progress is saved as you go, and that button is down here at the bottom in purple. It may be covered right now by the captioning. The narrative questions are next. These questions are also available to view on midatlanticarts.org. I recommend that you draft this writing in another document and copy and paste it into the portal. You can save your work in the portal, but just in case your internet skips out while you're drafting the narrative, it's a good bet to draft them in a separate document and copy and paste into the portal. Now let's take a look at the work samples. This should be submitted as a URL, and we will ask for two work samples. If your URL link has a password, make sure that you include it uh, here in the application. So that's the two work samples. And next, we come to the budget section. Here's where you let us know what your budget is for this project. You might use a different template or budgeting method internally for your project as an organization, but we ask that you please adapt that budget to fit the categories that we've outlined here. You can apply for up to 50% of the proposed artist fee up to $2,000, again, or $5,000 if you're based in the US Virgin Islands, but for no less than $750 plus eligible expenses up to $2,000. 
This form will auto-populate with what you're able to apply for based on what you enter in the form. So you'll see here, in an, as an example, I've put in an artist fee of $3,000 and all of these eligible expenses. You'll see administrative personnel, technical personnel, marketing, all of those eligible expenses. If we scroll down to income, you'll put what you think you'll make at the box office, any other earned or contributed income and donations. Then under grant request, you'll see that the form has auto-populated based on what I put in my expenses column. A really important note about this is that it will not show up until you hit save form after you filled out your expenses portion. Before you hit save form the first time, you'll see zeros in, this, in these two sections, but don't fret. Once you hit save form, it'll auto-populate. So since our artist fee up top was $3,000, it's telling me that I can apply for a maximum fee subsidy request of $1,500. And similarly, since we had $2,000 in total other eligible expenses, I can apply for $2,000 down here. Uh, this means that if my grant were successful, I would receive a total grant from Mid-Atlantic Arts of $3,500. Um, all right. Remember, as you fill out your budget, that all funds from Mid-Atlantic Arts must be matched on a one-to-one -one basis and that the match cannot come from federal government sources. Moving on from budget, we go to artist consent. This is where you let us know if you've had the opportunity to discuss the details of this application with the artist or company that you plan to present. We strongly encourage you to be in dialogue with the artist or company that you're working with for this application. You can use the text box here to give us some context on what your conversation has been thus far. The next tab for our records will auto-populate with information that you fill out when you complete your profile on Smart Simple. So check it out, and if you need to make any updates, you can do so by clicking either of these buttons here, Update Organizational Profile or Update Contact Profile. On this page, you'll also need to select a project discipline. These disciplines come from a list from the National Standard for Arts Information Exchange that is used by the NEA. And you'll see there's lots of options here. So just pick the one that fits best for the project that you're proposing. Finally, the certification page is where you'll confirm that you comply with all federal statutes and regulations that are listed here. There are links to each one directly in the application if you'd like to learn more. Make sure to review them and let me know if you have any questions about how they apply to your grants or to your organization. At the bottom of this page, you'll list your name, your title, your phone number, and your email. And once you've completed the rest of the application, you'll hit submit, which is down here at the bottom. Again, for this presentation, it may be covered by the live captioning that we have on the screen, but it's right down here. Um, once you've done that, you've submitted your special presenter initiatives application. And we'll stop sharing now so that I can switch back to our presentation and continue with our presentation here. So we'll back up to where we were. All right. So what happens after you submit your application? First, Mid-Atlantic staff review, review your application for eligibility issues, and you'll be contacted if we have any questions. Next, Mid-Atlantic Arts meets with the applicant's state arts agency to review applications and make funding recommendations. From there, the Mid-Atlantic Arts Board of Directors gives final approval on funding recommendations, and applicants will be notified of their selection status via email in August of 2022. 
So the review criteria for this application are listed here. They are grant impact, artistry, community benefit, and access. The guidelines for this program have more information on each of these criteria points, and I encourage you to review them and consider how your application, including your narrative and your listed project activities, address each of these criteria. So regarding uh, award notification, applicants will be notified of the status of their proposals by August of 2022. Then if you're awarded, 90% of that award will be made at the start of the grant period, provided that the grant recipient has completed the grant award agreements and submitted a countersigned contract with the artist or company. So here we have the important dates and deadlines listed out once more for reference. The final application deadline is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, and the project period for special presenter initiatives engagements is September 1st of 2022 through June 30th of 2023. And I do want to take a moment transparently to share the that this is a fairly tight turnaround for this program. Transparently, uh, I was hired at Mid-Atlantic Arts two months ago and have been work, working as quickly as possible while working mindfully to get this application out as soon as possible um, and make sure that it's ready for that uh, September 1st project period start. In future cycles, look out for a more spacious application timeline for this program. And meanwhile, I'd be really glad to talk with you about your feedback on the Special Presenter Initiatives rollout for this year or about anything else uh, here at Mid-Atlantic Arts. Um, just reach out to me anytime. Uh, by my email, which is again, slewitis at midatlanticarts.org. So this is uh, wrapping up the end of the slide deck here. And before we go on to questions, I'm really happy to welcome Ed Bourgeois here. And uh, we're gonna see if Ed is ready to talk. I'm gonna welcome Ed into our presenting circle here. And hello, Ed. Thank you so much. I'll pass it on to you. Hi. Thank you, Sarah. It's great to be here. I am calling from traditional homelands of bands of, of um, Chinook, Castlemet, Clackamas, Multnomah, Malala, Tualatin, Kalapuya peoples what's now known as Portland, Oregon, and it's the headquarters of Western Arts Alliance, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, I am the program manager of the Advancing Indigenous Performance Program, and we have uh, multiple sub-programs that may be of interest. In particular, for this conversation, I'd like to promote the Touring Fund, what we call the Touring Fund, which uh, matches awards made to you by your REO, so by Mid-Atlantic Arts, for the engagement of indigenous performing artists. So through our funder, uh, Mellon and um, the NEA and uh, multiple other funders, we are able to provide this matching funding, uh, it's a very simple process because it, it, it is based on your awards from Mid-Atlantic. Uh, they provide for you an opportunity to check a box when the act that you are engaging involves a, uh, a lead artist who is indigenous, self-identifying as indigenous. You check that box when you're awarded, Mid-Atlantic sends us the list, we just, um, we just sort of vet the artist for eligibility and, um, and then we just uh, send you an award letter. It's, it's that simple. There's no additional application process and, um, and all you need to do is provide that information on the artist. Um, as I said, we have a very broad definition uh, for, for the AIP program of indigeneity. 
it's it is only for US based indigenous artists so the artists must be US citizens or permanent residents they can have been born born outside the United States if they're from a tribe that is bisected by the border so you may know there are uh, Tohono O'odham or in the north Cree um, um, Blackfoot there are different tribes that where there are communities on both sides of the border so those artists would qualify. It also includes all of the U.S. territories. So we have artists that are from as far away as Guam, or Guam um, the Marianas Islands, uh, American Samoa. Uh, it's, uh, all, of those, all of those eligibility facts are on our website, and I can give you that address in a second. But basically, all you do in, in uh, making your application to Mid-Atlantic is you check that box that says they're indigenous. They communicate with us. We just check and make sure, and then we send you an award letter. Um, it's Sometimes it's a one-to-one -one match. It is up to a one-to-one -one match of the artist fee. <clears throat> In um, Depending on the number of awards, and um, and the availability of funds, it's not always a one-to-one -one match. So basically, if the list from Mid-Atlantic, if you all are engaging uh, a, a hundred uh, um, indigenous artists, which we would love, um, we have to sort of take the amount of money that we have and, and parcel it out. So it may not be a one-to-one -one match. Uh, but in some cases, when there have been very few applications, it has been a one-to-one -one match. And I think all of the previous Mid-Atlantic awards have been one-to-one -one matches. So that is that that matches uh, an artist award up to $2,500 generally. We've gone over in some cases, uh, but basically it doubles your money for the artist, uh, for the artist fee, excuse me. Uh, so please seek out those artists. We know they're there. They're uh, you know, there's a huge Native American community in New York City and, well, in all of the states. Um, I, I, I come from the East as well. I'm a, a Mohawk descendant. I was born in Connecticut. So I know um, growing up, there was this sort of myth that Native people don't exist in the East anymore. Um, that's after 500 years of, of uh, contact. Uh, so it it can be difficult, I understand, but um, we can always help too if, if if you have questions and would like any assistance in, in identifying artists, please let us know. Um, I know in, in we've made a concerted effort in the last couple of years in the NIFA region in New England to identify artists. And, uh, and there are some even mid-Atlantic artists who are going up to work in the NIFA region. So we've, we've increased um, the, the number of awards in that region dramatically in the last couple of years. So I know the same thing will happen in the mid-Atlantic mid region. Uh, we made our first award in Pennsylvania last year. Um, uh, we've made awards in Maryland, in New York State, and like I said, um, even in, in West Virginia, we have artists that, that are, you know, far out into the west of the Atlantic seaboard. So they're there, we can help you identify them. There are some amazing artists um, and, um, and there's, there's no additional reporting. It's about the easiest money you can get. Uh -huh, really, seriously, um, you, as, as, as we, we pay 50% upfront before the engagement. And then uh, when you submit your final report, when your final report is approved by Mid-Atlantic, we cash you out with the rest of the award. It's really very simple. Uh, it's it's been more complicated, of course, like everything else by the pandemic, but we're getting back into a, a routine where um, where you're actually able to present artists and we're able to pay you for them. During the pandemic, just anecdotally, during the pandemic, when we had these awards on the books, uh, and and presenters were not able to follow through with in-person engagements, we were able to. Um, to uh, recognize um, uh, performances, engagements that were done um, on the internet, that were done um, not in person. And we were also able, when, when engagements were completely canceled, uh, we, we paid the artists directly so that they didn't lose out on, on the fee that they, 
they might have, you know, that they were relying on. So um, the money's there, and we'd love to partner with you. We'd love to um, expand uh, your knowledge of indigenous artists in, in your area. And, um, and then tangentially, we benefit as well because we have a native uh, launch pad, we call it, which is a fellowship, a three-year fellowship program for native artists who are, who are on the, the cusp, who have some touring, but really need that push to, to create their networks to be able to tour widely. So um, encourage any, any stellar indigenous artists that you know to apply for that. Sadly, it just closed for this year, but for next year. And, uh, and we also have an opportunity fund, which is a micro grant program. The simplest thing in the world, um, other than the touring fund, it's, it's, a, it's a monthly, it's a rolling deadline. So artists can apply anytime for up to $750 micro grant. And it has very uh, liberal, permissible uses. So there's just about, um, the only thing they can't use it for is travel to a gig. Uh, but other than that, for buying equipment, for any kind of professional development, for, I mean, we've even, used, we've even awarded for emergency uses during the pandemic. So, um, and that's a national, that's, that's a national program. So if you have any, if you know any indigenous artists and they could use $750, I mean, we're buying microphones, we're buying things that people really need to sort of, you know, get their work out there. Um, all of those, I think, Sarah, I saw you share the the link to um, to advancing Indigenous performance. Just all three programs are described, and the guidelines are all on the website there, and um, and my email should be there too. So please feel free to reach out personally with any questions, any you know procedures, any artists you're wondering about. You know, we can help. Um, but we do use self-identification uh, to, to cast as wide a net as possible. We're not in the business of, of determining who's native enough. So um, the only thing that you might have to put on your application is, to, um, is, an, is an artist statement. If you can provide an artist statement of identity, uh, some REOs have that, some don't, but in your application, there should be an opportunity to, um, to do that. And then we can reach out to that, to that person and, and, and discuss some, some of those, the complications that can arise in people's identities. Um, it's not, you know, it's not for, for you to determine. You're, you don't have the pressure of determining that. Um, we'll take that on and, and be happy to talk with the artists. So we want you to apply. We want to give our money to you. And we want to build those relationships. That's probably enough of a ramble for now, unless you have any questions. Well, Ed, thank you so much. Um, and I am so excited personally that this these two programs are connected. Uh, so if you, again, want to brainstorm or learn more about how the AIP program can work with the Special Presenter Initiatives Program, you can reach out to Ed or me, and we'll talk about it and figure it out between us. Um, so Ed, if you're open to staying here for a few more minutes uh, to answer questions that anyone might have about this program um, or everyone, if you have general questions about the Special Presenter Initiatives program, let's uh, go ahead and open it up to two questions. I am repinning myself here. And I do wanna lift up that we did have one question in the chat that Sarah Tune went ahead and answered. Thank you, Sarah. The question was, we have to set up a new password or login if you already have one from the previous portal. And the answer is yes. We do need you to create a new login and password if you have not used midatlanticarts.smartsimple.com website in the past. So it is a whole new system and we thank you for your patience there, um, getting yourself set up with a new account. So uh, I'll hold for a few more minutes to see if any more questions come in the Q&A. I also wanna say that if you'd prefer to speak your question, you can put a quick note in the chat and I can unmute you for a moment to ask it directly. So I'll hang out here uh, for a few more minutes uh, and, and see if any questions come up. And if not, if something comes up later, email me anytime 
slewitus at midatlanticarts.org. We'll be happy to talk with you. And uh, I really hope that you'll consider applying for the Special Presenter Initiatives grant in this round um, and that you'll spread the word to fellow presenters in your community. Thank you, everyone. And I'm seeing a question in the Q&A. Are in-kind donations allowed? Yes. So the budget section does have a place for you to put in-kind donations, but they, I do not believe that they will count towards your 50% match. Um, but that is an excellent question. And thank you for your support in my continued learning of what matching is and is not eligible. Um, I will make sure that that is clear in the guidelines and you can shoot me an email after this to absolutely confirm. Um, but I, I do know that there is a spot for you to account for your in-kind donations on our budgeting page. Ed, I see that your hand is up. Go for it. I just, um, I might as well fill a little time if you're, we're waiting for people to think about their questions. Um, I will go back and look at the transcript of the recording later. Sadly, I was having trouble getting on. So I missed the very beginning of the, of the presentation about special initiatives. But I did want to say, if this um, actually does intersect, um, that in the Native community, uh, internationally, but, but within our program as well, there's a, been a lot of conversation as a result of the pandemic about what constitutes touring, what constitutes an engagement. Those things are all, can you know, I, I think we're all looking at, at a broader context and a broader um, definition of what those things are. And they're different in, in a lot of cultural communities. But one thing I would say about, uh, about the Native artists is on both sides, both as, as who qualifies as a presenter. Uh, we're, we personally, I can't speak for Mid-Atlantic, but we're looking at communities other than the performing arts venue, because a lot of indigenous artists are, are uh, are more interested in a community engaged experience that might look more like a residency than a than a booked performance, you know, with three, two performance days fly in and out. You know, there's a lot of conversation about climate change and about our carbon footprint and what what is uh, responsible uh, in terms of touring. So we are also very open to considering whatever you propose or, or, and whatever Mid-Atlantic accepts as an engagement in terms of what we're matching. So <clears throat> the Touring Fund, it's called the Touring Fund. It was set up originally um, you know, by an organization, the West, Western Arts Alliance that, that represents a lot of presenters, universities, uh, performing arts centers, et cetera. But we're embracing all of the sort of non-traditional presenters or non-traditional programmers that can be very small community organizations or, um, uh, you know, uh, communities of faith or, you know, a laundromat, I, I, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and and uh, this is not to override whatever Mid Atlantic is doing. You know, you'll have to follow those guidelines. But just know that we are very open in terms of what we're matching, and um, and who we're matching. So that's given you enough time to come up with more questions. I hope. That's great, Ed. Thank you. And um, I I really am excited about that question of like what constitutes touring. I think I'm happy to talk with any 
potential applicants who might be considering like, is what I'm thinking of a touring project? And again, for this round of special presenter initiatives, the artist or company that you work with does not have to come from outside of your state or jurisdiction. It can be from your same state or jurisdiction. So keep that in mind. And our, our guidelines do ask that applications come from an organization that engages touring artists to perform for general audiences as a significant part of your activity. But if you have any questions about if or how that works for you, especially if you're like, maybe that isn't me, I don't know. Let's talk about it and see, um, because I'd love to have that dialogue with you. And we want to make sure that this uh, funding can get out to as broad of a um, a community as possible. So with that, I think since we don't have any more questions in the chat, I'm going to assume that we are good to go. But again, thank you everyone so much for your time here today with us. And I'll look forward to uh, seeing your applications or to hearing any questions that you have. Um, again, slewitis at midatlanticarts.org. Um, thank you again. And thank you, Ed, for being here to talk about AIP. And thank you so much, Joy for uh, interpreting for us. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.